Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, it's Basil Chapman here. Yeah, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour on the 7th day of July. This is Thursday. And we're looking at the Dow. Let's go through this um, right now. The Dow popped up to uh, 31,333. That was really important in my work. It's pulled back a bit now, 31,216, um, up 178. I, I really want to see why Friday's uh, close at 4 o'clock. It doesn't have to close there, but I really want to, I'd like to see it. So far, it, it's excellent action uh, over the last three days. But I would like to see 31,400s tested. It doesn't have to close there. Just, I'd like to see it get there because it's got to get closer to that peak B that was made. At 31,885, you've got the same thing going on in the S&P at this particular point, and you'll see that the S&P is up a little bit better. It's holding better at 38.77, up 32. Um, this is going to be uh, that 39.45 area, the high of peak A, and then it failed. Mm, this is this is like another gray A underneath it. The Magnes Goods Kessex only a 62% on balance volumes and made a V-shaped recovery, but not yet very positive. Um, there's a lot to see, and you haven't got the nine period over the 14 period moving average yet. It's still pink, needs to go green. This is lovely action on a three-day basis. Not good enough, though. Um, I'd like to see by Friday a test of the 3,900 area. Mm, it doesn't have to close it, but a test at least. We're looking at the QQQ, the NDX 100, trading up 2.93 at 291.75. This is way better action. It's so interesting. One of the reasons why we went along in that whole area of the NASDAQ uh, and is because it seemed that those stocks that were just beaten mercilessly, they were down... 60, 70, somewhere down even 80%. There has to be some kind of rebound, and I think that this is it. Uh, I had a quick question. Could I please look at the e-money just before we uh, go on any further? Yes, the one-minute chart made a peak E at, I'll give you the exact time, right there. Uh, actually, let me open it up because it's a fascinating chart. Peak E, uh, kind of a, an arch formation double top. And that was at exactly, it was soon after we opened, just about before I came on the air. Uh, 389.75 was the high at 951. And here we are just a little bit lower, 38.78. So, yes, that's the one minute chart. You had the two minute chart, uh, peak D. You, had a, you got a peak D potential here in the 10-minute chart. So this, to me, the, the open was a little bit too exuberant, and now we just need to digest some of those gains. Uh, where would I expect? Well, the 38.89, 38.69 level is the 200-period exponential moving average in the uh, one-minute chart. But I, I would give it the whole hour of this hour, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, to see if it breaks 38.75, then it will probably go down there. So far... Um, there's a lot of buying coming in, and you can see that in the QQQ. Now it's up 368. Um, nice. I, I like this. And finally, you remember yesterday we were talking about this. I said the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, this green and red mini channel. We wanted to see a push nicely above it into the 29, 292 area. Here we are at 292.50. Can it hold if it can hold and close anywhere above 290 today? preferably about 294, it'll be challenging to go to leg B above the 296.58 high of around about the 22nd or so of uh, uh, um, the month, of last month. Now let's go to the IWM. IWM is acting quite well here. It's actually a little bit better. It's up 2.09%, up to 3.59 to 175.14. This is going to help the weekly chart. If at any point in the next seven trading days, I'd even say five trading days, it's able to touch 182 in the weekly chart, once again hit that 14-period moving average, it has a better chance this time of breaking above it than ever before. We're looking at the um, gold. Let me do this again. Gold is uh, up 
at ten dollars and one seventy four uh, one at seventeen forty seven. He made a low yesterday of seventeen thirty something, seventeen thirty six point five. So it's up uh, eleven twelve points from that. This is good. It's going to have an inside bar so far, but that weekly chart says you got a lot to do, gold, because you broke down below that uh, important Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. It's now repellent zone. So that whole area of 1790 to 1810 is going to be your big challenge. Can you close above that in the month of July? Certainly, you do not want to break underneath 1700. That would be a very big negative. Of course. So let's go to silver. Silver itself is trading uh, up at 19.40, uh, up 24 cents. Yeah, I didn't even put notation here because it just seemed like it was going lower and I didn't bother. A, A, B, this is C. Uh, but I need to take it from there. Sorry, A. And that needs to be taken from there. So it was A, B, C. This was a D. That was an E. And that was an F. And then you went to a G. Remember G, the letter G, either on the upside or the downside, is always where you want to be very careful because that, I usually put a G slash C, if it's that's the way, the, yep, that's the way the notation is, to say this is where there could be a sharp bounce, and then you've got to be careful. Well, there was a sharp bounce. It even went peak A, B, C, D. Chapman wave obligation in the buy signal to buy mode says you should go to at least a D. And then you've got to be careful. Why? The fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. But it made the dreaded H arch formation. And then it broke down in a brand new. So this would be right here would be D. So this is either a D or a C. It doesn't matter. What you're looking for is the stochastic 11% hasn't really turned up at this point, and the V-shaped pattern in the unbalanced volume is a good sign. But look at the distance in the MACD. There's a lot of work needs to be done before silver can even touch 20.01 to 20.38, the uh, pink 9-period moving average and the 14 uh, exponential moving average in the daily chart. Let's go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper should also be bouncing. Yep, it is. It's up 14 cents, 3.55. And uh, the 3.63 is the pink 9-period moving average. And 3.73 is the 14-period. There's a lot of work to be done to start climbing to the 3.80 level. But it's great that at least there's a turnaround here with the doji candle from yesterday. Looking at crude oil. Uh, crude oil, big move up, almost $5, 4.70 at 103.23. I dipped to 95 yesterday. Uh, 95 to 103, I would say that's a big move. But look at those big red candles to the downside. But basically, you remember for, for a month now, we've been saying stuck in a trading range between range between 123.61. Uh, that changed because it gets smoothed out. So let's just change it right now. Let's call it 121.46. And it'll change again next month. Um, because this is a continuous contract, and then the base of 90, and here it is in the in the middle of the trading band, uh, towards the lower end under the weekly nine period moving average and 14 period moving averages. So it's still stuck in this range. It might stay there a little bit longer. TPT, TLT, that's bonds uh, trading from the peak C's pull back quite sharply, and that makes the TPT the inversion uh, of the gray leg A, but still with pretty good technical. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 168. S P S 30. Be found the chapter tiger. Now, you have. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Right, I just mentioned the den here. Uh, Duffy said, good morning. Uh, Wall Street Journal, just then it goes on to say, uh, Dan, Dan, who's in the den, uh, prediction is coming true. Wall Street Journal Merck um, is Merck and Company is advanced talks to acquire C Gen, uh, C Gen Inc. Uh, C Gen uh, aiming to agree on the purchase of the cancer biotech in the next few weeks. And here it is. Hey, congratulations, Dan! Fabulous call. Uh, actually, I got another call here that you you made, and you're you're really good in the biotech sector. Wow, C Gen uh, is uh, made a peak E back in 2020. Around about 217 or something, 213.94. It makes low lows and lower highs in a sell mode. And then all of a sudden, it hits this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in the, in the monthly chart. Weekly chart made a PG trying to make a big U turn, U shaped pattern. And the daily is in a G slash C at 179.73 up 4.60. So, yeah, nice, nice call, good action. Uh, I see in the den. Uh, two, two questions. No, one is a statement. Halo, 52-week high. So I thought, Halo, wait a minute. Halo, I remember that. But I have a friend who started a foundation called Halo Foundation, uh, Life for Children with Neurological Problems. Uh, um, so it's actually the, the uh, anagram is um, Help a Little One Foundation. It's a fantastic foundation. It's really for for children um, to enhance the quality of life for children with neurological uh, diseases. Um, it's actually centered here in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, uh, Newton. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I thought it was that, but it isn't. It's Halo, and Halo is Halo, Halo Therapy. Oh, Halo Therapy. Halo, Halo, Halo Simic. Oh, I can't read it. Let me just put it in here. I can see it. Let me get closer. Hello, cream uh, therapy. Okay, so there are so many. I mentioned this to my subscribers over the last two weeks. The the micro bio, bio caps, just oodles of them all over the show. I've got a list here of about 13, 14. We have one that we put in today. I had two choices how to play it. 
I chose one officially. The unofficial way was to start a position, a split position this morning uh, before the open when I sent out my newsletter at about 8.15 or so and then add another one lower down. I said, now let's go, let's go for a, a slight pullback to pull to buy. So there were two choices. My official one is one that hasn't kicked in because it just gapped up a little bit and now it's up almost 5% from where I wanted it. Actually, from where I wanted it, it's even more. Um, but that's the way these things are going. So this halo, H-A-L-O, trading at 48.38, up $1.63. Yes, is at new recovery highs. The last high was back in 2021, up at about the 55 level. And I still only have that as a peak B. Um, is that correct? A, B, C, D, E, F, G in the first round. And now it's A, B. Yeah, I've got this as a brand new A, B, and then it's falters. Now it's starting a brand new A, B. It's actually in leg C. Remember, once you've st got your low point, that low point says that every single peak or trough, you've got to count. That's your only obligation. So that means that peak the, B right there, the, we, the month of uh, February, I think it was, or January. February of 2021 at 56.40. Let me just type that in. 56.40. And that was, what did I say, 2.21. Pull back to just over 30, about 31. And now it's trading at 48. And this is a brand new, I call this gray leg A. Whoops, gray leg A. I'm not going to change the color right now. I don't have time. Uh, gray leg B. And this is leg C. And now it's a blue C because that officially overcomes the letter B over there. And that becomes a C. And it says in the cup formation, over a period of time, there should be a retest of the 5640 high that was made back in February of 2021. So longer term, this is looking good. Short term, this is a leg E. It's getting a little bit overbought and a little bit overbought in the day. But the fact that it's gone to this big spike, I needed to check. I have, I have a feeling that this is not leg D. That high there was at 40... 48.58, uh, that was back in May. This one here in June is 48.54. Oh, man. 58 and 54, I was correct. My eye said, yeah, it was underneath the previous high. So that's one cup formation. But if you look at it, not as a cup that goes like this, and then there's a handle, I'm making the whole thing a cup. I'm even stretching the, the trough low, so that there isn't the plumb line moves to the right and it's differently centered. And now we've got something a little different. And that just says that in this particular leg, having gone three peaks higher from the low that was made in the 42s about a month, about a month or so ago, um, this is probably this is a D, but it could even reset. I could do a whole bunch of things. So I'm watching it closely. Yeah, fabulous move. But most importantly, on the shorter term, this whole area of 40, it's at 50, it's at 48.67 right now. It hit 50.25 this morning. Huge move, 46 to 50. I mean, it's almost uh, like a 9% move now, so 4% move. Now what we're looking at is the, the whole area in this 9 period and 14 period moving average on the 40. Sixes, that's going to be key support. Um, so, yeah, very nice. Congratulations if you're in it. Uh, let me uh, see. Another question came in. FCX, well, I want you to do these today because I love the action for the last two days going to the lows because it was saying to me there's a really good chance that the Freeport McMoran, we saw copper had a big bounce. This is a copper company. Um, other metals, mostly copper. Went to a peak E up in the 50, 52-ish uh, area, plummets down to the 26s, gets cut in half, and here it is, a nice bounce. This is a bounce. So look, let me go through these. Freeport, Freeport, the question is, has this begun a brand new move to the upside? I think it's attempting to form a base, but if you look at, let's just go through all these. Uh, look at this XCLF. This is the Cleveland Cliffs flat roll steel. A whopper of a pullback from the 34s to the 14s. I mean, more than cut in half. And now it's got a bounce of 4% today, up 62 cents to 15.81. That's steel. You can even go to U.S. steel. Uh, same thing. U.S. steel bounced from yesterday, and it's up 2.87%, up 48 cents. I don't think these are ready for the big move up. As a, as a trade, 
Absolutely, they so oversold. They can do that. This is a leg after the downside in U.S. Steel. Um, I, IPI, I wanted to look at yesterday. I put that in my notes. I uh, wrote down, let's have a look at IPI today or Friday. We can do it today. Nice bounce up 2.43%, up 99 cents at 41.76. Plummets from the 120s to the 40 to the 39 level. Give me a break. I mean, whew. So to get a buy signal and then a buy mode in this whole group, I think something else is going to have to happen. So let me just say that the question came in, could FCX rally sharply from here? Yes, it, it, it touched the 29.54 level, which actually is just about the high of, that is the pink 9 period moving average. The next level of resistance is 30.88. I would only treat it as a, um, as a spec buy and maybe on a little bit of a pullback in the nibble here or wait for the 28 seat that holds on a pullback and then one more bounce but i this this area is still highly contagious i'll be back in a moment dow's up 160. if you want to take advantage of this sector now is the time to subscribe to my gold report the gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold which is the currency and bond markets New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This Unigen Inc. IMGN also showed up on my list of screamers. Look at this. It goes from $3, just in the low $3 peak, A peak B, and here is in leg C, up 4.5% to up 23 cents at 5.38. I can't tell you how many I've got. I mean, I'm going to add this to the, I, I, I think I wrote it down, but I'll just write it down while I'm, got it on my mind. Uh, Immunogen. Uh, just unbelievable. Even the IBB, which is much bigger now, we're talking about this is the, these are the big caps. The IBB, Nasdaq, Biotech, beautiful move up today, 1.63%, up $2,124.79. Hey, that is really nice. Okay, let's get back to our story here. Uh, we were looking at these different things. So, FCX, where would I expect it to go on the short term? Oh, this is CX. Oh, CX is finally doing a little bit of a dance. CMAX, uh, uh, SA, Mexican Cement Company. Let me make a note of that. 
another stream of potential, uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, maybe double topping. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, but what I want you to type in was FCX. Um, yeah, so the question is, what do you do now? Do you buy the gap up? There's a huge gap. I mean, a five, almost 6% gap here. Um, but it's so oversold that I can see it trying to get to the 30.89 level. Personally, I'd rather be going for stocks that have shown strength and continue to show that strength rather than to go into the spec area of stuff that's just not working in this environment at all, which, of course, let me just S SCCO, I believe, is the other one that I'd look at. Yeah, SSC SCCO, which is uh, Southern Copper. I uh, had a nice candle yesterday, big move up today, pulling back uh, from the high, but it is up 4.3%, up 213 at 50.89. Uh, it's over the pink nine period moving average, the black 40 period moving average resistance is at 51.98. But it is so far, the MACD is about to turn up, but the nine period under the 14 it needs so much work that you're going to need uh, the MACD to turn up stochastic only at 16%. Now, they're all in the, just as quick trades. I'll tell you what I'd prefer to see. What is today, Thursday? I'd rather play an option. Rather play a, a call option uh, to go. And I would probably go not this week, a weekly option. I wouldn't go this week. I would go for next week, which is the, uh, so what are we, the 7th? So this is the 8th. Yeah, go for the 15, go for the monthly, the 15th option in, in FCX. And I prefer to be in the money. I would mix it. I wouldn't get too carried away. You know exactly how much you're prepared to lose, but I would have a mix of an in the money. Uh, it's a 2901. If you can get a 28, I'd go in the money. And then just a tiny, like one or two, just crazy number, like... Uh, they would probably expanded a lot. Yesterday would be fantastic. But something in the 30 area, if you can get it, well, I wouldn't even pay more than um, 35 cents for it. I, I probably, I wouldn't want to pay more than 21 cents for it. That's a big ask. But that's the only way I would do it. There, as I say, there are, look, if you go, question about Exxon, they're all, all of the commodity related, and of course, copper is commodity related, um, area has just been really pummeled to the downside. And now you've got Exxon Moment, Exxon Mobil, a nice move up, 3.6%, up 3 at 86 I, I don't know if they're ready for a bigger move than a bounce right now. But as a bounce, I'd say yes, but I prefer, I mean, I would rather see something in this particular point. You know, we're out of our IBM. We got a stop down of, with a couple of uh, um, uh, profits in a smaller position. But I wasn't prepared to be messing around. But look at IBM as a as both an internet play as as a um, uh, cloud. They've held so well. I didn't go back in. I should have gone back in. Uh, but I decided we we're in other areas that are really working, and we're actually a little bit leveraged to the upside. I, I didn't want to overdo it, especially paying 137, 140 bucks. I wanted to keep keep our portfolio. I still want to have cash handy. So, look, I'd rather go with something that's really working, like an IBM that maybe doesn't have the same bang for the buck if Freeport McMahon actually, you know, really starts to zoom up. This is a slower mover, but there's a chance that it could test yet again the 144s, and it's a 140. So I just don't know. I'm just saying. Only treat it as speculation. That's what I'm saying. Okay, next question I had is, could you please show us the, could you please show us the E-mini again? Uh, let me see. Okay, now this is the E-mini. It doesn't have to be the E-mini. Uh, it could be anything that we're looking at right here because the Chapman Wave methodology is the waveform that never sleeps. Uh, what we're looking at is, that's a lower low, so that's an A. Underneath it is an A. Oh, is that a B? That's a B. I think it's 25 cents higher. Let's double check. So here's your starting point right there. Uh, that takes you to 38.84.50. And this is 38.84.75. Yep, I was correct. That's a B. So then this becomes a C right here. And this is a pattern that I've seen over and over and over again. In fact, I'll show you this chart. I'll expand it out and you'll see what I mean. I didn't have a chance to do this because I'm doing the show right now. 
but normally I would be drawing a cup for a big bowl formation. This is more than a cup, it's a bowl formation. And that says there's a very good chance. Oh, I should have drawn this in right earlier on. There's a really good chance that in this time frame, you could get a one to one to the left side, right side price time match. And that says this has to be green, green right there, here to the right, boom. And it says, oh, that's even way too far. Anyway, I'll keep it there. That says by by 10.44, by quarter to 11, Eastern Time, we've already made a leg D. Look at that. There's your leg D. What's the Chapman Wave methodology say? Um, you want to go from a buy signal to a buy mode that says you're going to get to a D. This is what I'd be looking at. And I'd also put in a Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line right there. And this is exactly what we've got. Look at that for a repellent zone. Um, so that's what I sh said I'd show. A couple of questions came in again. Is there any chance that at some point I'll have a webinar, all day webinar, showing these techniques live, which I've done so many times before over the decades? All right, here we go. So that is, remember, I always put that in, but I'm always drawing in the an alternate count an alternate pattern. And it says, in this particular formation, if you get close to or you get to a D, that and it's below the previous high, watch out that it doesn't become a rotating um, sine wave going from a cup to an arch to a cup to an arch. And why do I mention this? Because look at all these patterns. This is exactly what we were looking at. Uh, look at the 200 period moving average. Look at that fantastic support. Right there, test, test, test uses it as a springboard, goes through peak D, pulls back, tests again at 925 or so, and then starts peak A. Oh, oh, I wanted to talk about this. I had questions over the last three weeks or so. Someone someone uh, with a good eye said, hey, I noticed a red letter. What, what's the red letter for? That's in the Chapman methodology. When I get two parallel highs, especially when I get two series of parallel highs, but the wave count is still very early, I tend to go, I put in a red in this case to say this is a phantom peak because everything about it, look, you had a little hiccup right here in the on-balance volume and the stochastic. It looked to me like this could have been one a quarter point uh, difference, and therefore I wanted to treat that as a phantom peak so that I got to D early and I'd be able to prepare for that. So then it goes to peak C, D. Yes, it did pull back for time rather than price, held the nine period moving average. And then it went to E. So technically what I normally do, even though it's it's only for me, nobody else, I grab the E, I take it away, I put in the D, I put in the C, and I take the color of the back to the and say, okay, we finally got to our D. I'll be back in a moment, Basil. Are you Chapman. in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, well, folks, we're back and we're looking at Google Fresh from Zip. What about Google? Uh, Basil, would you please look at Google stock split? Yeah, uh, post stock split. Yeah. So what we're looking at is Google's been making this rectangle formation, basically trading between 24, say 24,100 and to 24,100. What did I say? 24,100. I should have said 24,62. So in the 2,400 area, and I won't go to the low that was made at 20, 44.16 on the 24th. I'd rather go to this cluster of lows in the 2100, 2130 area. So it's between there. But if you look at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, it's getting there now. If you look at the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, that comes in at uh, 2381. And I've been saying I like Google. I don't love Google, but I like it as a better chart pattern than some of the other uh, fang type stops, stocks. They've all changed their names now and they've all split. But most importantly, I think Google, as soon as it starts to trade, it can't just get there. But as soon as it starts to trade in the 24 100s, then the only resistance is that level on the 4th of May at uh, 2462. If at any point in July, let's give it the whole three weeks left of July, if at any point it even touches, 2470. That's only 120 points up from here. It could do that. But any time in July, if it touches that, all of a sudden it looks like it's free to move closer to the 2509 200 period exponential moving average from which it broke down on the 11th of April. It was a high of 24, uh, 2658 and a low of 2592. And that was it. It hasn't even got close, and it still hasn't got close to the 200 period. I don't even have to look, look at the 200 period moving. I'm just using it as an upside target if all these resistance levels start to be taken out. Now, that's a big ask because it's gone from, you remember the pattern that I always talk about? The Chapman wave arch formation, lowercase h, that if it holds the left side, could then have another h pattern, which looks like a lowercase m. And then after that, if it still hasn't taken out that left side low, that's the low of the, about the 22nd, 23rd of May. If it hasn't taken that out, then a close above the previous arch high right here, that's the high of 2387.97 on the 6th of June, 6622. If it closes above that, it is free to start moving even sharper to the upside. So I'm going to circle, I'm actually, if I circle, that means that's a different implication. That's an implication that is asked of me by GW uh, in the Tiger YouTube. So let me make it a rectangle. I'll just make it a rectangle. Let's put this over here. I will put it over there. And we'll say that's the area. That would be my target area. Let me even fill it in, in yellow, because full color. Let's make it yellow. There we are. 
So that, that would be my area of the target if at any point it starts to trade above 24,100. Boom, 2509 becomes uh, some kind of a target. Okay, with that said, um, so what's this question? It's a very, wait, uh, there was an e, uh, text. Uh, I'll get to that. Okay. Uh, let's go in sequence. We did that. We did FCX. JKS. Michelle, I don't know if you've got all these things, but you're doing JKS. Let's see what JKS is. Uh, JKS is. Into Solar Holdings Company at a high. Oh, it's the same pattern. Look, made a former high back in 2020, back almost 90, pulls back to under 30. What a hit that is, 67%. And then it goes peak A, peak B, peak C. It's in leg C right now in the monthly chart. And the daily chart is peak A, B, C, D, E, F. And this, in fact, could be C1, C2, peak A, B, C, you know, I'll do this. I'll put I'll put that down. I'll put, I'll put JKS Friday as a as a technical Friday JKS daily. I've got it, and I'm not going to say for Rachel. She didn't ask me. She just mentioned that. But for me, I'm going to put it in. So this is in leg. I'm calling it leg D for the moment. Up seven point seventy eight at seventy three thirty eight. Up eleven, almost twelve percent. Fabulous move. Oh, let me look at fuel cell. I don't know if it's in the same area, but. Yeah, nice move, up 7.83%. Almost one of my streamers I was going to add today. Oh, 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 fuel cell. What a nice move. Up at 4.30 today, it's up 31 cents at 4.21. Oh, I forgot to type it into my, I don't know if I would have done that. But this is a nice move going to the high, peak D high, FCEL of 4.53, made on the 6th of June. Oh, we were just looking at the 6th of June. So, yes, good eye. Good eye, Rochelle. Um, let's go to Basil. Would you draw an oval body, daily VIX upside down, stalk leg, also your take on IBB? Oh, right, let's go to the VIX. Good question. Oh, Greg. Hey, is this Greg from Florida? Um, our Greg that I was just talking about the other day who said, Oh, my God, all this time to learn peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And now he adds an E? Um, yeah, so ah, falling X. It's not quite a falling X. What it is is the dreaded H pattern. Took out the left side low, then closed above it. Uh, there's a potential for another H pattern here. Um Yeah, so let, let me just do this. I, I know what you mean. So this is the pattern that we'd be looking at is the inverted uh, stalk leg formation. So let me see, inverted stalk leg formation. No, I don't, I don't actually see it. Send me a, send me, send me a chart if you can, uh, and we'll look at it. An upside down, VIX up to also take it. Yeah, I, all I can say is that it's more the H pattern going to a lowercase m, and if at any point in the next week it closes under the 200-period moving average of 24.94 in the VIX, or especially if it closes sharply below the 23.74 low of the 8th of June, um, it says buying pressure is going to become more intense. That's all. So, yeah, it's good that you, you pointed that out. But as I said, I... Maybe, maybe it's there, but I don't see it. I should see it because I'm the creator of the Chapway Stalk Lake Formation. Um, no, it's just a re a reverting from a cup to an arch to a cup to an arch, and that's all I can say. Okay, okay. And the question about the IBB, I thought I did that earlier on. So the IBB, I'm calling this a brand new leg B. Why? Because in the dreaded H pattern, it took out the left side low, but immediately closed above. And that's really important with the technicals improving, going from buy signal. It's in a buy mode right now in leg B. The low of 105.39 on the 12th of May went all the way to a peak D and stopped dead at the 50 period moving average, arches over and comes back and it makes a slightly lower low. It goes to what? It goes to 104.29. So that starts a brand new buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode because it's closed decisively above the arch high. And now in the big picture, the um, IBB, the NASDAQ Biotech ETF, if I can just find this, there it is, is making, I'm going to just be conservative and go to that peak over there, is making a big cup formation with a successful dreaded H pattern. 
So I like it. We almost went long this today, but instead I've decided to go for this other uh, one that unfortunately just missed. Because some people got it, but I technically have just missed it. But yes, I like the IBB. And if it can get uh, from 124 to 128, 131, the 200 period moving average becomes the target. I'll be back in a moment. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, uh, just a bunch of questions I, I see now. Um, so let me just do this. Uh, could I post ARKK? That is Kathy Wood. It's her uh, innovation fund. Is trading up a dollar ninety four at forty five point ninety, up four point four percent. Yes, we are long. We've been long in and out uh, for for uh, a couple of weeks now, and um, yes, it's doing very nicely. Most importantly, I wanted to show the semiconductor. You see this big push to the upside. I love the semiconductor action yesterday. I wanted to go long, but I didn't want to buy a gap just on this particular issue. And what I preferred to say to my subscribers was, because we have TQQ, uh, the uh, triples on the QQQs, I just wanted to stay in that position. We've done very nicely. And uh, even up to date today, 4.5%, up 1.18 at 2732. Just as a generic thing before I got too carried away, um, we are, you know, We've been very selectively long, so long the, the Dow, and we've got others. So a, a quick thing about a, a green thumb. Where did I see that just before we run to the break and we're all wrapped up for the day? Ooh, I hope I can get it. Uh, it was a good question. Uh, I'm going to get it in a moment. I posted that. Oh, man. 
it's over the 9 EMA. I'm trying to find the symbol GTBIF. GTBIF. This is in the cannabis area. Yeah, this is nice. It's up uh, 29 cents at 9.46. That's the kind of action I like to see, but it is in a sector that is acting terribly, MJ. Um, even here, it can't get anything going. So I like the fact you've chosen a particular one. It's a leader in, in pattern right now. So stay with that. If you get into it now, it's a little... I would wait for a pullback if you haven't done anything in this area. Wait for a pullback to see, see how, how it holds any pullback. So yes, we're in fabulous positions right now. We're trying to add, we're starting to add quite a bit. Um, and just very selectively, check out my opening call, Lady News, have a wonderful day. Larry Pesavento is up, great programming here, and I'll 